Welcome to this video on solving multivariable equations. To understand this process, let's look at these two problems. The equation on the left, you may be asked to solve. But with the equation on the right, suppose we were asked specifically to solve for x. Why would we specify solve for x? Well, because there are other variables in the problem, a, b, and c. We could be asked to solve for a or b or c as well, but we'll specify here to be solving for x in both cases. Now for the equation on the left, presumably you would subtract 5 from both sides. And that's probably something you already know. Well, by comparison, if we were going to solve the equation on the right for x, and we wanted to isolate the x, wouldn't it make sense to subtract b from both sides? Now we don't know what b is, but when we're solving for x, we're going to treat every other letter than x as if it were a constant or a known value. And so subtracting b from both sides gives me this. Now the difference between these two equations is that the one on the left I can simplify. 12 minus 5 is 7. But by contrast, the one on the right, I can't simplify c minus b because I don't know the values of C or B. So I'll leave that the same. Back to the equation on the left, if we wanted to solve for X, it would make sense to divide both sides by three. But if we wanted to solve both, if we wanted to solve the equation on the right for X, wouldn't it make sense to solve both, to divide both sides by A? We don't know what A is, but that doesn't prevent us from dividing both sides by a to get the x by itself. Back to the equation on the left. The 3's cancel because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and we have 7 thirds, a numerical answer. By contrast, on the right, a divided by a is still 1, so the a's still cancel, but there's nothing on the right side that I can simplify. So what you can see here is that both of these equations, left and right, were both solved for x. But because the one on the right had other variables or letters in it, those letters all appeared as part of the answer. Both of these, left and right, are considered solving for x because we have x equals a, an expression that doesn't have an x in it. So we've isolated the x in both cases. Let's look at one more example. In this equation, we could be asked to solve for b, solve for h, solve for t, or solve for a. Now, you can notice this equation is already solved for a, so that isn't really a question that would be asked. The other three are valid questions, and just so we can focus on one of them, let's solve this equation for b. That means we want to get the b by itself. Well, there are lots of ways to go about doing this, but the first thing that I would do is clear the fraction out so we didn't have such a messy equation to deal with. In order to clear the fraction of a half, why don't we multiply both sides of the equation by 2? That will effectively cancel out the half. Now, many students think on the right side of this equation that the 2 will, quote, distribute to everything inside of those parentheses. But what's inside those parentheses? is three things multiplied together. It's something that's factored. So the two doesn't distribute, but what I can do is rearrange the order of multiplication and just simply say that two times a half is one, and that will cancel out that. Now, we still aren't done solving for B. We have to get the B by itself. I could distribute the H on the right side of the parentheses there, but it seems more efficient at this point to divide both sides by h, because therefore, on the right side of the equation, I can then do h divided by h is 1 and cancel out the h's there. Now remember, my goal here is to solve for b. So now to solve for b, I could subtract t from both sides of the equation. That would give me this expression. And now I've solved for b. The answer is 2a divided by h minus t. And that completes this short video on solving multivariable equations. 